するが Well, that was an amazing chapter. Everything culminated at this wedding. And I'm really getting the hype because shit is just going crazy, okay? This chapter, I think, embodied Oda's genius and then some of Oda's shortcomings. I'll explain later, but first, let's talk about. Some of the chapter. We found out this chapter that Luffy was the one to come up with the actual plan. That is surprising that Luffy, Monkey D. Luffy, is the person to come up with the plan to put the mirror in the cake and actually use the animals as well. That's amazing. Luffy has had so much development in this chapter that I'm just, I am honestly impressed by Luffy and his growth and his development, um, as far as being a captain and being a leader. It's been recognize and gg luffy i i i admit that i've slept on you as a captain as a leader but these this arc in particular he's done things where i can see him as a great captain in the future because right now i think he's an okay captain but i think in the future he'll be a great captain if he continues to progress in this manner brule and those guys they're kind of still out of it brule and opera those both of those guys are referenced this chapter um, not Diesel, but we know Brule, Diesel, and Opera, they're done. They're done, guys. No one is going to feel sorry for these guys because they're helping the Straw Hats. And everyone knows that, yo, after this wedding is over, if they're still on the island, they are, they're so dead. They're so dead because, yo, Big Mom is not going to want anything to do with them. So they should probably just leave with the Straw Hats. We were talking earlier that Opera is probably already on the ship or he left with the Fishmen. I mean, Opera, he has to be gone, bro. And Smoothie... That was kind of surprising that Smoothie did not follow up on everything that was happening. And she waited until the wedding to actually get back to Mondor to verify anything. Well, actually, what happened was Mondor, he kind of noticed that Opera was acting weird. And he never really followed up. He sent the soldiers to follow him. But Mondor never really checked into it. And he assumed everything was okay. So Big Mom and her pirates, they've been dropping the ball. And this chapter kind of showed exactly the type of relationship again that big mom has with her family where katakuri jumped in to stop luffy from hitting the picture and big mom got mad and said are you trying to save me and that's weird to me that's weird and i think that's the reason why everybody's just sitting around right now and nobody wants to do anything because they're scared of how big mom is going to react and i get that i get that where they don't know how she's going to feel what she's going to say if she's going to think that they're betraying her or they're trying to step on her toes or impede. But Big Mom seems like she has some self-love issues where she has issues with power. She's power hungry and she doesn't want to concede that in any way, even to her right hand man, presumably in Katakuri, because even he helped her out. And she's like, are you trying to impede that? I didn't understand that at all. I really didn't. The wedding cake is it's a huge cake. And, of course, the Straw Hats is funny because they're still eating the cake in this chapter. Like, each of them is still eating the cake. We saw Nami and Chop of those guys. They're eating the cake as they're talking. And Luffy, he's still eating the cake. And what was surprising as well is in this chapter that when Katakuri, well, you know what? It's not that surprising. When Katakuri says, or Big Mom says, I don't know which one he is. And Luffy says, it's me. I mean, it's typical Luffy. He has a moment like that every single arc where something is a plan. It's going off without a hitch. And then Luffy just does something. And it's like, oh, Luffy, come on, man. But it was a good chapter nonetheless, though. Um, Big Mom and her powers, they're starting to get more explained. But we can confirm that her life or treat, life or cake, life or leave power is reserved for fodder. Because if you're not scared of Big Mom, it's not going to work on you. But not necessarily fodder, but someone that isn't scared of Big Mom. Typically, the other Yonkor are not going to be scared. Luffy will not be scared. Um, the supernovas, I'm not sure about all of them, but for the most part, top tiers are not going to be scared if you're going to go fight a Yonko. They're going to be fine with that whole scenario. So I don't know how I'm, how I feel about that power. It's, it's hacks, you know, for, for, for like fodder, but for the most part, it's not something you can use against the top tier. So it depends on how the top tier is, their whole makeup, because if you're scared at all, you, you lose lifespan. So, um, regardless, I don't, I don't know how to feel about it. Big news, man. My boy, big news. He is, basking in everything that's going on right now soul pocus that's what he calls her power 
And he says it's a scoop, man. It's a scoop. And like I said before, regardless of what went down this chapter, he's fine because he knows that I'm going to have a good story. And the fact that someone for the worst generation just jumped in here and did that, I'm going to have a, an amazing story, actually. So big news is just like, yo, keep it going, man. Keep it going crazy. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Gastino is still in Capone. And it's funny because, you know, Gastino, he's been doing all this. And we talked about this on stream as well, where Big Mom, right? Everybody, Big Mom is going crazy. Everything is focused on Big Mom. But they still find a time to even go at Caesar. And they're still talking about him. He's crying, yo. I think they're starting to change him. I'm not saying Caesar for Straw Hat anymore. But they're starting to change his whole mindset and everything as far as how he feels about life, I think. I think they're starting to change that about him. And I'm enjoying that. I really like that Caesar is starting to come around. Yes, he has a terrible past. But hey, man, we all make mistakes, right? We all give kids, um, can't, you know what? Let's just move on. I think Capone had the face of the chapter. Like I said before, when Luffy revealed himself, he has those every week. And it's, it's hilarious, man, because we just knew something like that was going to happen. Even the, the plan going off really well. It it kind of made sense for Oda to throw this in there. But then when I talked about Oda's genius and his shortcomings, um, I wanted to reference like how this chapter, it was an amazing chapter. It was good stuff all around. But then we still got a lot of vague things as far as Katakuri's power, Big Mom's power. Like, why is that still being hidden from us? And then things seem really convenient with the family standing around and how Big Mom just goes in a casual conversation with Jimbo after the cake gets destroyed. I don't get it. I really don't get why that would be the case, but that's how Oda is trying to set up this chapter where it's a mix of comedy, a lot of comedy and action. And I feel like with the stakes being so high, that should not be the case. But Big Mom is taking it seriously somewhat. Um, but for the most part, it's not been as serious. It's not on a level of Marine Ford, of course, as far as the life or death situations that's going on, because we have just random conversations about Jimbo leaving the crew. And speaking of Jimbo, I think he was the MVP of this chapter. And everything he said to Big Mom, it was really surprising in a way. But then I understood it because he, at this point, is ready to join Luffy's crew. He knows at some point I have to leave Big Mom and I have to let her know what the deal is. And Big Mom took this as, you know, straight up mutiny. And she's right. It is mutiny. And he says, yo, take it as that. But regardless, I'm going to be a straw hat. And Big Mom even talked about the lifespan thing. Like I said, that didn't work on Jimbo because he's not scared of her. Okay. And Big Mom said something interesting here. Um, she said, choosing to rather die than be somewhere you don't want to be. Can't sympathize with that. No. So what do you get from this? Personally, I think Big Mom in this situation, she can sympathize with that because I think that's something she did do. I think Big Mom was somewhere where she didn't want to be. And she chose to take a leap. She left and she she was like, you know what? I'd rather die than to be here because I don't want to be here. I'm not accepted here. I th I'm thinking that's possibly Elbath. I'm thinking that's where it is Um, because that was just random. It's too vague and too ominous for me not to kind of draw that conclusion that that Big Mom actually went through that. She also referenced the fact that Jimbo doesn't like her. And I think she really has some self-love issues where she's really self-conscious and she knows that she's powerful, but she wants to hold on to that. She doesn't want to lose things. That's why you can't really leave if you want to. So she's she's like that. She's that type of person where she's mad clingy, yo. So she's the girl where you try to date her and you start dating her. But eventually, you know, you're like, I'm going home. She's like, oh, text me when you get home. FaceTime me when you get home. I'm going off on a tangent, but the thing like Big Mom is just she does too much. She has a tragic past. I think this is a hint towards that. But I think we will get more as the story goes on for sure. So like I said, Big Mom's crew is still standing around in Smoothie. She's checking Mondor to figure out exactly what's going on so they didn't die. I feel like that's something that should have been verified beforehand. You can't just wait till the, the actual wedding to be checking these things. You have to tie up loose ends, bro. You cannot have things lingering in something so big in like a huge event like this. But like I said, big news. Every panel you see him, he's just so happy. The fact that Daifuku Oven and Perospero, they're just there, man. They're just there. They're not moving. Again, Amand as well. I don't know if they're just waiting. They don't know what to do with everything that's going on because they know how Big Mom is. They let her have her time. And then if she calls on them, that's when they move. I believe that they have to be that way. 
just on how Big Mom is as a person. We've seen that. But Jimbo, he insults Big Mom to a great degree, I feel. When he called her Mir Yonko, basically comparing her to the future Power King, which is Luffy. And then he just brings out a sake cup to, you know, saying, thanks for everything, dude, but I'm out of here. We can drink to it. Regardless, I'm leaving. And Big Mom, she attacks Jimbo. I want to see what happens next chapter, obviously. That's not the end of the chapter. We actually got Brooke, man. Brooke in that Luffy costume was just an amazing highlight for me because that felt like a culmination of just the hype moments of Brooke this arc. So much development for Brooke as a character, I feel like, this arc because he even called a young lady. We even got a full cover spread after the chapter of Brooke and that whole interaction with him and Big Mom. Just amazing stuff. But like I said, um, we f- needed more. We need more as far as matchups, powers, how things work. Things are still way too vague this late in the story. I didn't mention Katakuri's power, which is a, he's a Logia. We find out this chapter that he's a Logia and he has the Mochi Mochi no Mi, which is a uh, sticky rice cake. When the full translations come out, we can actually distinguish exactly what it is because I would not expect something like this to be a Logia, um, because it's a sticky rice cake sweet. Um, but we'll see Logia is a typically element. I mean, Jimbo, he's not one to make a mistake, but hey, he says he's a Logia. He's a Logia. And if he's a Logia, that could change things as far as how we determine Logias and the possible Logias of the future. If a sticky, sticky rice cake sweet is a Logia, I'm like, what about a sticky, sticky chewing gum? You know what I mean? Like, what if that's a Logia going forward? But regardless, Katakuri stopping Luffy. I know a lot of people are down on him right now, but he's doing everything he needs to do. Again, not a lot of time has passed here, but he's still the only one that's moving. And Big Mom even called him out. was like, yo, why are you helping me? Are you trying to impede? That was crazy to me. I didn't get that. But, you know, Big Mom, she's weird. I guess that's why she's a Yonko. To be powerful, you have to be different. You have to stand out. And her abnormal nature, that's kind of what's driving everything right now. But Katakuri, he did the right thing. And, you know, he continued to do what he had to do. But like Jumbo said, Katakuri has a sticky fruit. I guess when he attacks you, you stick directly to it. And he can pretty much trap a lot of people like that. I'm surprised he hasn't used that yet. Like the scent water flowing to trap everybody into one great ball. But um, Jimbo used the, the tea and that kind of, you know, detached Luffy from the sticky, sticky stuff. And they even said that water is a nerf for him. And I don't know, man. It seems like a lot of Big Mom's people, they've been nerfed. Um, by water. I mean, water does nerf devil for use, but not to this extent where it affects their powers this way. Luffy can fight in rain, but they just can't be submerged. So I'm not sure why Oda is going this route to kind of downplay Big Mom's commanders where water is the only thing. And then that's super convenient for the Straw Hats because they have someone like Nami and Jimbo. So, you know, they have a fighting chance here. Definitely have a fighting chance with all the assets they have. Capone is still undercover. And Jumbo even took the flack for saying, hey, I told Luffy about Mother Caramel. And Jumbo, he's really stepping up. Like I said, MVP of this chapter, Brooke MVP of the arc. And Luffy was amazed. Luffy was like, oh, he's finally accepting my request. And that was great to see. And it's everything's coming together right now for the Straw Hats. We'll see how Big Mom responds. She seems way too cool, especially with the cake being destroyed. And she, it looked like she was about to go berserk even after the cake got destroyed because she said life or cake. And that was, you know, very unreasonable at that time. So I thought it was going to go berserk, but she, she managed to calm down somehow to have a discussion with Jimbo. So I think that Jimbo doing that really hit home. And that's what actually calmed her down because she actually did that. She left somewhere by choosing to die than to be somewhere she doesn't want to be. That's my perception. But let me know what you think. Like the video, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. We out.